Assalamu alaikum. It's been one week and a lot has happened. To put stuff in perspective, uh, about uh, two nights in, I thought about texting Colin to see how his campaign was going after the past month. That's how jam-packed this experience has been so far. So to get things started, I'd like to give a quick recap of what's happened so far. First things first, we had a training day in DC. After that training day, we uh, flew out to first Brussels, and then Dakar, and then they get finally landed in Banjul. This, over the, this was a 26-hour flight that took place over uh, 24 hours. Following this, we stayed a night in Banjul, and then went off and stayed the rest of the week until Sunday in uh, Masimba, which is the P main Peace Corps training facility. After that, as of last night, we moved to our uh, more permanent, I say more permanent because we're only going to be here through training homes in each of our training villages. I am in a Jola village because I will be learning the language Jola. That brings us to today, which brings us full circle one week. Now, starting at the beginning of the week, I'd like to say that my Peace Corps volunteers, or fellow Peace Corps trainees, I should say, are excellent. They've, they're all excellent people, warm, welcoming, kind, and incredibly generous. To put stuff in perspective, we were wearing each other's shoes, each other's pants, people were sharing medicine, and that's something worth noting, because I got sick in the DC airport. I came down with an extremely runny nose, and by the time I got onto the plane, I had a sore throat as well. One of my roommates was named Zach, and he spells it with an H. Regarding the heat, the heat's actually not too much worse than North Carolina. In fact, I'd say it's right now better than a Charlotte summer, except for the fact that there's no air conditioning pretty much anywhere, and where there is air conditioning, it's not very good. Because of that, I'm sweating all the time. I heard highs of 130 in the hottest time of the year, which apparently is true, but only far inland. Much better than I was hoping for. In fact, the temperature, even though it's even though it is pretty hot, it's really uh, not as bad as I was expecting. That said, it is very bad at night. Uh, at night, there's been a lot of times, especially since while I was in Misembe, I was in a top bunk that I just had, it took some adapting to be able to fall asleep. Just, in fact, I, I still have some trouble falling asleep due to just how hot my bedroom is. So fun biology story of the week. While getting vaccinations, Dr. Camby, one of the things I noticed was him pushing, uh, putting in the vaccine and I noticed uh, air bubbles in the vaccine. And this was something that had me scared for a second. And I also noticed another thing that uh, something I asked about first, which was that he, before doing this, pulled it out. And this, when he pulled it out, this was when I noticed the air bubble went into the vaccine, or the syringe. Now, when I asked him about it, the point was actually, in fact, to pull it out to show that there was, uh, that no blood was coming out to see, make sure that we hadn't pierced a vein when giving the vaccine, because the vaccines were meant to go into the interstitial muscle, muscle fluid, and because of that, it was actually completely safe to be pumping some, a little bit of air into the body because it wasn't going into the blood. So, customs in the Gambia, there are some interesting ones that I've learned. One, you're not supposed to sing while bathing or in the shower. And the reason why is because this is seen as a private activity. You're not supposed to announce it in any way. And singing in the shower, that's a way of bringing attention to yourself while you're in the shower. So singing in the shower is a very big taboo. Uh, as far as some other interesting ones, you're not supposed to look your elders in the eye. You're allowed to look people who are younger than you in the eye, but generally speaking, looking your elders in the eye is a sign of disrespect whereas looking away from them while talking to them is a sign of respect. In addition, you're supposed to stand very, very close to people as you talk to them. Uh, very Closeness is shown, uh, seems to, uh, a sign of familiarity, a sign of friendship, a sign of kinship, so you want to stand as close as possible to show your friendship for that person. Gambian families all eat out of one bowl, 
ideally four to a bowl, but the number doesn't necessarily need to be just four to the bowl. And it, they, for the most part, use their hands to eat, even eating stuff like rice, which is something we're learning to do. It is very, very difficult to eat rice out of a bowl with your hands. Yeah, we, we made a mess. A, a big mess. One thing, though, that helps for cleaning stuff up, though, they have mats that in Jola are called um, kambasa. And the kambasa may, are very comfortable and, to sit on. And you sit on them while you eat, and then as after you're done eating, ring them out outside, and you're done you've cleaned the floor it's because it never got dirty to begin with as for another cultural quirk the gambians love their sugar in fact at breakfast today my my host father gave me this this is entirely filled with sugar white sugar for my coffee that he brought me they love their sugar they love it a lot. Now, how much they like it compared to Americans, that's a good question. They like it more explicitly than Americans do in some ways, like... But whether or not they're actually having more is something I wonder, because we put our sugar in everything, and we do it insidiously. We have it in corn syrup, we have it in uh, salad dressing, we have it in all sorts of different things hidden in there. But uh, as far as their food, I don't know how much sugar they actually use in baking for the most part. I just know they like accenting a lot of stuff with it from, uh, from putting it into coffee and tea to putting it in juice to putting it on popcorn. They like putting sugar on stuff. Not everything, though. Most of our meals, mealtime meals, don't have sugar, and... Uh, as of this point, I haven't had a single dessert yet. It's all been just a meal, and then, uh, then you're done. And one final bit of interesting trivia about Gambian culture is you, uh, greeting people is a big thing. You want to greet people, you want to say not just one greeting, you don't want to just say, uh, Salamu alaikum, you want to say, uh, Kairibe, or, uh, uh, what's the good Jola one? Masume, uh, and you ha say that as much time, as many as you can, and that's the I what we've been told is the ideal. Although in practice, it seems people are more comfortable just saying one or two, and the, I don't know if that's just a Jola thing because again, I'm in a Jola area, and it may be different in the Mandinka or Pular or Wolof areas. But again, I've been stationed in a Jola area. As for one funny story regarding this, uh, when we were told this, while we were beginning with greetings, the two of the two of our trainers got, came forward and then both went on for about two minutes of just straight rapid fire greetings in various languages at one another. It was amazing. And finally, a bit of insight. And this was something. Uh, something that hit me pretty hard yesterday when I came here. And the, the thing is, I was expecting to see a rapid drop in, uh, a drop in poverty. I was expecting to see, like, be confronted by my privilege as an American. That's something that was obvious to me. I knew I was coming into a poor country. I knew I was going to be losing a lot of luxuries. What I was not expecting was to be confronting my privilege as a Peace Corps volunteer. Because as a Peace Corps volunteer, I am in many ways living with many privileges that the people I will be living with will not be. And I will be living with this all the way through. I will be having malaria pills. I will be having water filters. I will be having... Uh, I will... I will be having all kinds of excellent resources, access to medical facilities that my fellow people won't be able to, where our medical kits we're not supposed to share with people because it's uh, a limited resource that's only supposed to be for us. So that's something that's uh, hit me pretty hard. In fact, as another 
thing. That's another thing that was hit me pretty hard was yesterday, uh, I had to explain to a man who was a civil servant uh, what a water filter was. And admittedly, he it may have been that it was a language barrier thing. Maybe he just hadn't seen one like what I had before. Maybe he knew he knew well the concept of it, but when he saw the one I had, he didn't know what it was. Again, I don't know how much of that was me, but nonetheless, uh, most people don't have water filters. Oh, and as for another thing, Masimba is a nice facility. I did not think that going into it, uh, but also the the um, Peace Corps, uh, I don't remember what it's called exactly in our first night, that's nice too. In fact, that's even nicer than Masemba. Significantly nicer than Masemba. It was, like, as nice as your average, uh, green, uh, poor Greensboro house. Like, low, <laughs> which, I mean, may not sound nice, but, like, every, every time it was a step down. But the biggest step down was from Masemba to this, this current apartment that I'm living in and that was that was a big shock to me because when I went to Masimba I I thought this we had seen what it would be like but we hadn't seen anything yet in addition uh, the Gambia as far as I've seen it the roads there are dozens upon dozens of these structures that are just sort of unfinished concrete frames of buildings. Now, it wasn't until yesterday that I actually got to learn what they are, and they are, in fact, unfinished buildings, because the Gambians are, many of them are too poor to build an entire new building all at once. So they will spend, build it in spurts, paying to build part of it, then later, uh, later during another portion of the year, once they've earned enough money, uh, paying to build more of it, until finally they have a full building. And the one in my compound, they've spent three years on it already. And, yeah, well, you can see, like, they're, they're not halfway done with it yet. They're going to be working on this for a long time. And it's not going to look like the quality of building that most, uh, most people in the Western world would expect. Uh, not from a three-year project, not from a uh, few-month project. And that's rather humbling. But beyond that, I hope you're having a great time. Love to hear from you. Don't know when I'm going to get to see your, uh, your videos. And don't know when I'm going to get to upload this. And here's a goat I saw being born. Actually, it's two. See ya. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>